Race one of the state New Zealand Ocean Swim Series was the State Harbour Crossing and it enjoyed some of the best conditions in its 10 year history. There was plenty of rough stuff at the front end of the race as some of Australasia's top swimmers battled it out for line honours. Kane Radford, the human GPS emerging victorious in a close finish to kick off the season. The beautiful Bay of Islands in the far north is the stunning location for race two of the state New Zealand Ocean Swim Series, the Bay of Islands Classic. Dubbed the winterless north, it's usually reliable for its great weather on the summer circuit. But as race day emerged, so too did the wind and the rain. The grey skies didn't deter the more than 700 strong field as they made their way by ferry from Paihia to the start of the race in Russell. Why are you doing the swim today? Because um, I normally swim in the pool and it gets me out of the pool and it does something different, yeah. I don't really swim very well in the choppy weather, but it'll be good. Have fun. Thank you. Just for the challenge of it. Yeah? Yep. The first time you've done it? No. No, I've done it for about three years. I'll just to say you've done it, I suppose, and swimming across the harbour seems like a useful thing to do rather than just swimming around some boys. Yeah. Have you done it before? This is my fifth one, yeah. Your fifth one. Why do you enjoy it so much? Oh, I don't know, you do it while you're fit enough, there's plenty of time to sit in your rocking chair and do nothing. Yeah. I, it's just one physical sport that I feel comfortable doing. I've been doing it for about seven years, I've never done this one, and I'm quite looking forward to it. So many people you talk to tell, oh this is my seventh time, this is my fifth time I'm doing this race, but I, you keep coming back year after year. I just think it's like you swim as a kid, you know, all New Zealanders, well of my age, swim as kids a lot. And then you kind of lose it, and then you can, it's something that you can discover when you get a little bit older again. So it's quite satisfying, and it impresses your friends. <laughs> Impresses your friends indeed. Let's have a look at today's course map. A total distance of 3.3k from New Zealand's original capital in Russell to the jewel in the New Zealand tourism crown in Pai here. Nine marker boys, it is a straight swim. Total distance 3.3 kilometres. And with the latest in the weather conditions, let's catch up with Glen Lama with the Ford forecast. Well, yes, we've got quite different conditions here for the State Bay of Islands Classic to what we had at the State Harbour Crossing in Auckland three weeks ago. Beautiful conditions that day, not so today. First of all, we've got a 15 to 20 knot nor'easter coming in, so it's going to be breezy for the swimmers today. And then we have a full tide coming in an hour and a quarter after the start of the race. So together with the tide and the wind, the swimmers are going to have to be very careful not to be drifting left of the marker boys and getting a little off a course. So going to be quite challenging for the swimmers today. It's Showery as well. Showery as well, of course. The swimmers won't worry too much about that, of course, because they're wet anyway. So 720 swimmers set to go in the 3.3k race. 930 across all three races today in the state Bay of Islands Classic. It's going to be a good race for all the swimmers. We're going to get wet. <laughs> Our two men's favourites for race two are Australian Jared Port and local lad Philip Ryan. It's going to be a good race. Uh, me and Philip. Um, bit of chop today out there so it'll probably be a tough one but uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it. Yeah a little bit different to the harbour crossing a few weeks ago wasn't it in terms of uh, the uh, the water conditions? Yeah definitely yeah harbour crossing was awesome just flat glassy but um, yeah today yeah, it's a bit different a bit miserable but uh, yeah it should be nice. Describe your swim in the harbour crossing you came third. Yeah yeah that was a tough swim it was good but uh, first race of the season for me um, with Reese Kane and Dylan Dunlop Barrett yeah it was awesome um, just, uh, yeah, the finish, run up the stairs, it was a bit tough, but, um, yeah, no, they got me, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was good, but... You're in a wetsuit again today. How's that been going? Have you been doing any tra more training in wetsuits? Um, yeah, so I didn't wear one for the state, uh, Harbour Crossing, um, so I took one home and decided to train with it for a little bit, wore it in the ocean, and, um, yeah, today I'll be wearing it. And uh, you feeling confident in it? Um, yeah, kind of, so, but, yeah, we'll see how we go after, <laughs> yeah. Well, Philip, um, you look forward to the swim today? Yeah, um, it's going to be good. Conditions aren't the best, but it should still be a good swim. You like it choppy? Yeah, I love it choppy. It makes it interesting. How are you feeling, mate? I mean, how's your form? How's your shoulder? I'm feeling really good. Um, I've got New South Wales next week, so this is just sort of leading into it. I'm going to blow out and see what happens. You're really going to go hard today and yeah. take Jared on, right? Yeah, yeah, take him on, see what goes. Hopefully he can stick with me and make it a good race. Now he came fifth in the World Championships 5K race as a current 5K Australian champion. What sort of a boost would it be for you if you were able to 
knock them over today? Oh, it'll be great. It'll be a good confidence booster, and it will just help me with next week at the 10K racing them there as well. So it's going to be good. Good luck. Thanks. We are now set for a start in both the men's and women's elite races, of course, seated today according to your ability. Joining me in commentary is Scott Rice, and Scott, just over 700 competitors. How many waves? Four different start waves today, all speed seated to uh, be starting the swim with people with similar ability. And again, this is a traditional beach start, so a little bit of a run, a little bit of a wave before they do get into their work. And the starter's hands. So plenty of nerves. We are underway, race two of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series, the Bay of Islands Classic. This is a good field again, very much a battle of the Bledisloe low between Australia's Jared Port and you'd have to think, the local lad as we alluded to earlier, in Philip Ryan. Well it never gets old looking at the start of these swims, don't they look spectacular as they make their way up to the first of the orange markers about 350 metres offshore. They've got a nice thin corridor between the wharf here and the moored boat so Mark just starting to find a little bit of room for themselves now. These elite athletes, this is the sleeveless wetsuit, number three of Jonathan Pullen. And uh, number one there, that is Jared Port in the green cap. And just next to Jared Port too, Philip Ryan, as we alluded to. So a couple of these elite swimmers deciding that they want to go with the sleeveless wetsuits today. And I guess that's just about flexibility, Scott, being able to get the arms over quickly, just with a little bit more ease earlier. We tend to see the athletes that maybe don't come from the pure pool backgrounds with the long sleeve wetsuits. Yeah, that's right. I think um, swimmers that have been in the pool uh, for 10 years or so, they like that flexibility around the shoulders. So uh, this is a good look at Philip Ryan in the number two pink cap. Yes, a member of the New Zealand team at the FINA World Championships, competed in the 10k event there, and he's been on the circuit for a long time. He's just one of those guys who always tends to just sneak under the radar. But this is Jared Port, the Australian, and he has gone with the long sleeve wetsuit today, the first time for Jared. The Australians, well, hey, if they had it their way, they'd go without a wetsuit completely. Yeah, well, the warmer waters of Australia, they just simply don't need the wetsuit, and he uh, came over three weeks ago for the State Harbour Crossing. He chose to wear the swimsuit rather than the wetsuit, and I think he's really starting to find out out that these wetsuits give buoyancy, they give extra speed, and he simply can't afford to not wear one. Well, Blue 70, they've done a great job in terms of really pushing the technology, the rubber these days, so much flexibility in them, particularly under the latch, just below the sort of the shoulders where they do require a lot of flexibility, the rubber very thin, very elastic, and again, boy, a lot of them really don't notice once they've done a little bit of time in them. So Ryan got about a two or three metre lead over Port at the moment and this is a, a talented age group, this is Jay Cadman Kennedy sitting in third place currently so he'll be very happy with that effort, uh, chosen not to step up to the elite field at the moment but with this performance if he can carry it on he certainly will be by the end of the series. Yeah, one athlete we haven't seen a shot of yet, but he's the man who's in his mid-40s by the name of Brent Foster. He's wearing a red cap today, and Brent is a guy who first represented New Zealand Commonwealth Games right back in 1986. As we now go back and look at our lead swimmer in the elite women's race, not the strongest field we've seen, but an opportunity for some of the younger swimmers to emerge, Scott. So she's lost her elite cap, just wearing the big H on her cap now of Cowick Packeringa. That's the club she swims for in Auckland. 15-year-old doing very, very well. Yeah, unbelievable. What motivates her? Well, my auntie was a swimmer, and I always went to her competitions to watch her, and that kind of inspired me to start swimming. When did you realise that you were actually, you know, quite good at it? Uh, probably when I got my first national uh, medal, and I think I was about nine. You're 15 now. What are your specialties in, in, in swimming? Uh, butterfly, yeah. It's quite a tough stroke. You have to be kind of mentally tough to handle it, and yeah. It's different to freestyle. I'm not a big fan of freestyle, but... <laughs> well, it's freestyle today, isn't yeah. it? But well, ocean swimming, do you see yourself specialising it into the future? Um, I want to kind of be a specialist mainly in the pool, but I wouldn't mind being open water as well. So how does maybe swimming, how do you think swimming in the open water competitions is going to benefit your pool swimming? Uh, probably just endurance-wise and being, like, tough, because uh, swimming in the ocean is really hard, but it's fun, it's different, yeah. Yeah, well said, we say it every week, but no black line to follow in second place, though. This is Liana Smith, so a good swim from her. Another relatively inexperienced, unknown swimmer looking to establish herself today. And what's interesting here is the stroke rate, Mark. You know, she's obviously got a very, very strong pull under the water, but it's stroke rate much lower than, uh, than Paige's stroke. We're back at the top end of the field now. Looks like Philip Ryan's lost his cap, but still a slender lead over Jared Port from Australia. 
Yeah, great little battle developing here too. And I just like the fact that we are seeing Philip Ryan take control, wanting to set the pace, wanting to set the tempo. But interesting just to see the stroke rate here of Jared Port, very relaxed, almost Ian Thorpe-like. One hand coming through, almost touching the other hand before we see him pull through the water. Again, just showing the efficiency of the kick and how technically good he is. Yeah, wonderful swimmer, 18 years of age last year at the London Olympics, over 1,500 metres of talent for sure. Halfway through, race two of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series. Watching race two of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series, the Bay of Islands Classic, a swim of 3.3 kilometres, and what a beautiful part of the world it is, the Bay of Islands. Certainly one of the real jewels in the New Zealand tourism crown. And just having a look at our virtual swim map and our swimmers, our lead men, about halfway across this famous stretch of water, and it is still Philip Ryan of New Zealand, Jared Port of Australia in the green cap, though, sitting on his feet. So now, not just physical, it becomes it becomes a little bit more mental here. This is where strategy begins to come into play. Well, strategy is a big part of Jared Port's race this morning because look at the drafting. He's just drafting off Ryan's feet at the moment, just conserving energy with that slow stroke rate. And uh, looks to me like he is ready to pounce. And looks, he's just taken a few metres off Ryan now. This could be the moment, Mark. Yeah, well, it's interesting, isn't it? We, we talk about it every time we see one of these races, the importance of sitting on the feet. About 10% energy you can save there. Now, often in an event like this, it can come down to less than 0.01% in performance. So that is energy saved. And you just sense Port now, again, as you alluded to, it's just beginning to wind up. He's like a coiled spring, just waiting to explode. And now I just start to see him to make the move. So it's so important here, Scott, that we do see Philip Ryan breathing to both sides. He doesn't want to miss this. Well, I'm sure he's not going to miss us. There he goes. He is breathing to the right. He can see Port starting to put the acid on him now. Can Philip Ryan respond? Port really starting to put the kick in now, and he's got a good body length over Philip Ryan now. So this is where the Kiwi is going to have to do something special and move it up a gear. Well, you just see Jared Port, though. Those feet are just beginning to move away from the hands here of Philip Ryan. The gap is beginning to open as we have a look. The very impressive resume here of Jared Port. You alluded to it earlier, but an Olympian in the 1500 metres in London last year. Yeah, and a great performance at the FINA World Champs earlier this year, fifth place in the 5K, and I was speaking to him earlier, and he said he was only three seconds behind the winner. That's how close some of these open water races uh, are around the world. Believe it or not, you can swim for an hour and win by a second. But uh, look at the lead he's taken out of Philip Ryan now, so it seems to me, Mark, that he was holding back, conserving energy and waiting for the right time. Absolutely, and he, look, he might not have been feeling particularly great early on either, still adjusting to using a full sleeve wetsuit, and then he eventually did come right, the nervous system just comes up a little bit, as we just look at that beautiful shot in the background, man, wonderful, wonderful, and the swimmers, you know, you talk to them after the race, Scott, and they do get a wee chance to have a look at some of the scenery, but I'd imagine at this point, all they're thinking about is getting to the finish line, maintaining that stroke, as we see Jared Port of Australia taking complete control now of this event, and it really looks like the only thing that's going to stop him from winning this is again if he gets offline if in fact he doesn't get his navigation right. So nine marker boys from Russell across the pie here and look at this weather it was looking very ominous prior to the start but it has totally moved through this uh, front and uh, the blue skies are starting to poke through now so view of the pie here wharf as they approach with about 300 meters left to swim and something's gonna have to go really wrong as you said Mark for Port not to take out event two here. Well he looked very impressive in the first race the State Harbour crossing. That day though he finished second to Kane Radford. He's looking to right a few of those wrongs. He didn't swim in the full sleeve wetsuit that day. In fact he swam in a skin suit and he's decided that common sense should prevail and it will make him certainly a lot quicker and this is going to be a very comfortable and victory indeed for the Australian. Good number of people here at the finish line in Pai here will congratulate him when he gets to his feet which again is incredibly tough. You go from that line horizontally on the water to get Getting to the vertical position, heart rate goes up another 10 beats. And the waters, not the typical blue, pristine waters of the Bay of Islands. I think the heavy rain in the last week has, uh, has just held the water down. But here he goes, just about to get to his feet. And a warm welcome by this Pai here crowd. 
So Jarrett Court of Australia will take out round two of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series, the Bay of Island Classic. He will do it comfortably. That is a very good swim. And again, sends a message now to the likes of Kane Radford for the rest of the series. Race one, no wetsuit. Race two, wetsuit, comfortable victory. On oh, with a whole lot of Australians yet to come over for, for the series. I think it's going to be one of the most competitive of any series we've had. And this is the Kiwi, Philip Ryan, second place. And a comfortable second for him. So some good points there for Philip Ryan. He was third in the series last year. He'll be hoping to get uh, obviously one or two up on that. But he'll really have to push uh, the remaining events in the series to, uh, to try and get up that standing table. And in third place in the first of our age group athletes not seated today, this is Jay Cadman Kennedy. So congratulations to him. He will get himself on the podium. That is a very good swim indeed. Well, Jared, congratulations on the win today. Are you happy? Yeah, definitely happy. Yeah, it's good to get a win in, uh, in the series uh, to get those overall points up. Um, yeah, definitely happy. Philip got off to a very good start, but you, did, you weren't worried too much about that? Um, yeah, I wasn't too worried about it. Yeah, I just wanted to try and jump on Philip's feet and um, yeah, stick on his feet for a while and then see if I could get around him and then go. And, and then, um, yeah, yeah, that's exactly worked. what you did. Yeah, yeah, it worked well. Yeah. Indeed, all right. Well, this sets you up. Oh, for the for the new year, um, for the rest of the series, it's important you got a win here today. Yeah, definitely important. I needed a win after getting third in the first one, um, just to get ready for the yeah. Obviously, the goal is to try and win the overall, and um, it's definitely going to be tough. I think it's going to come down to the last swim. Philip, um, Kane, it was Reese Mainstone, Dylan Dunlop, Barrett, um, and all the all the other Kiwi boys. So I think it'll be pretty good. Well, Philip, um, just talk us through the race today. I mean, you came second, you got off to a good start. Um, and what were your tactics in the race? Um, I wanted to get off to a start, try and make a break, and I think I made a little one, but he seemed, uh, Jared seemed to pull it back, and then he just sat on my feet, getting a ride. I kept making sure he was still there, and in my mind, I knew he was going to make a break. It was just a matter of when. So, But I'm, I'm happy that I um, didn't stick with him, but it's how the race went. So Yeah, you kind of, um, you kind of expected um, that he'd go for it at some stage, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I knew he was going to do it, and that speed he's got from the pool, it just obviously played a factor today, and with the chop, it's a bit harder to catch back up with, like, the timing of the waves. So, oh well, there's always next time. A wonderful optimism there, that is fantastic. And this is the leader in our women's race, Paige Schindler-Kemp, just 15 years of age from the Howitt Pakaranga Swing Club. She will, by the looks of it, pick up her first race in the history of this series. A real star of the future. Congratulations, taking out the Bay of Islands Classic. Yeah, huge amount of talent and a big future, Paige. So looking forward to seeing her at the future events. OK, Paige, well, well done. Congratulations. You happy? Yeah, thank you. It was, it was a really good race. <laughs> and a good swim for you today. And uh, what was uh, tricky conditions? Yeah, it was really wavy um, in the middle of the race, and the start was, like, hectic. <laughs> Even though you're concentrating on the pool, it really is kind of giving you confidence or is it going to build your uh, season through the rest of the summer? Yeah, especially with my long-distance uh, long races in the pool. It should be good, yeah. And just confirming our overall elite results, Jared Port of Australia taking the men's title 40 minutes and 8 seconds, Paige Schindler Kemp taking the women's title in 47 minutes and 10 seconds. In the Lumino leaderboard after two races, Paige Schindler Kemp winning at the moment, Charlotte Webber the winner of event one, opting not to swim this event in third. And confirming the standings after two races, on the men's side of it, it is the Australian Jared Port. Philip Ryan narrowly behind him, plenty of pressure being put on Kane Radford, who again decided not to swim today. So three shorter swims taking place uh, after the main swim. The Step It Up 1000, the Give It A Go 300 and the State Ocean Kids. And here are some of the swimmers coming out. Helen Castle's in the green cap there finishing and also in the green cap her dad. Cat recovering from a triple bypass operation just over a year ago. Helen's twin boys will be competing in the afternoon events to complete three generations of the same family. Great stuff. Uh, Helen did win. Yeah. But you let her win. I gave her a head start. Yeah. Um, well, is she quite competitive? <laughs> but that's what, like a dad. Yeah, that's what dads do with daughters. You just got to be nice to them, don't you? Yeah, you do, eh? Yeah, yeah. If you come in with a smile on her face anyway, that's the main thing, eh? And hopefully she'll carry on. And what is, what's your message, Pat, to, uh, you know, other people of your age group who've got kids who might be interested in swimming? 
it's just something that becomes part of your life. You know, you live for it. It's uh, you know the, the the light goes into my eyes, and um, and, and I must just go back to uh, the, having the bypass. I mean, it's it, it's put me in good stead for that. And one thing I like to do is just thank Auckland Hospital and Middlemore Hospital for what they've done to me because I'm back on the road. Yeah. Well done, Pat. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, here's a couple finishing the swim together. Lovely moment for them. And uh, this is a very special story. So John Pavich, he was a marathon runner for many, many years before the joints gave way. He started swimming when he was 75 years of age. And here he is finishing the State Bay of Islands Classic at 80 years today. And the event crew doing a wonderful job to celebrate with him. What an awesome milestone for him and to swim from Russell to Pai here. Well, wonderful inspiration too, and very much sending a message to everybody watching this. If you think you can't do it, well, this gentleman shows that you can do it. It just simply comes down to having the dream, a little bit of ambition, and getting yourself in the pool and taking those first steps. Yeah, well said, Mark, and <laughs> check it out at oceanswim.co.nz to get involved. You enjoy it out there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I loved it, especially being on my birthday. And then the swim, yeah, just, just wrapped. I had a good idea I could do it because I've trained hard enough. What's the attraction of ocean swimming for you, John? Well, I was a marathon runner in the 80s, I started, and I ended up doing about 17 Rotorua's, so I put all that into swimming. Yeah. Now you got banners and balloons. Look amazing. at all these things, John. Today. You felt very special across oh, the finish line, eh? That's a bloody great, great birthday. <laughs> now you were there was talk you were going to get a cake full of chocolate fishes on top. <laughs> <laughs> you pleased you got didn't get one of those? No, no, this is good, eh? <laughs> What an absolute character. If you want to be part of the fun, still four more races to look forward to in the new year. The next race, the 26th of January, the Capital Classic in Wellington. Check out oceanswim.co.nz. And if you'd like to swim for free while you're on the site, click the tile, swim for free, raise some money for Surf Life Saving New Zealand. Well, we hope you've enjoyed all of our coverage of race two of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series, the Bay of Islands Classic. We'll leave you with some highlights of the State Ocean Kids. And we look forward to seeing you for our next race in the series, the Capital Classic in Wellington.